Man, I really feel like a YouTuber right now. I got the microphone in the frame. I got the bookshelf. I got the softbox light five feet above my head. I got the whole production, baby. Anyways, how you doing? I hope you're doing well. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about my journey. I'm coming up on five years of being a programmer, right? Or at least doing this professionally for five years, which is really crazy to think about because... To be honest, I'm nowhere where I thought I was going to be five years ago. I don't mean that in a, in a bad way or honestly a good way, um, but I think that's, I mean, that's just how life is, you know, we, we build up these things in our head and they don't happen the way we, we picture them all the time. Anyways, uh, but yeah, five years in January, if you count my first year and a half, doing an internship, which I do because I got paid for it and, you know, I got a lot of value out of it. So with that being said, I want to talk about the five biggest things I've really learned in these last five years. So let's go ahead and jump right into it with number one. And that is, I think it's something that, that I struggled with certainly, and I think a lot of people struggle with, is that finding your first software development job it's a pain in the ass, man. It's hard. <laughs> it's very difficult. And when you have no experience and like me, if you're like me, no degree, um, it's difficult to get your foot in the door somewhere. But to be honest with you, once you get that first job, it is such smooth sailing from there. I've been doing this like almost five years now and I have recruiters literally blowing up my DMs on LinkedIn every week. So how do you get your your first job as a dev how do you get your foot in the door essentially and to be honest it's pretty simple really in practice i mean it it takes a lot of hard work but the simple answer to that question is you really need to sell yourself you need a selling point and what i mean by that is you need on your resume to show whoever you're you're applying for whoever you're interviewing with that, that you know what you're doing. Basically, you need to start writing software <laughs> and you need to put it on your GitHub or portfolio. It doesn't have to be a unique piece of software. You know, get together with a friend, follow a YouTube tutorial and try to make it a little custom. Literally just do anything to get code out there so you can show interviewers that, hey, I've written code, here it is. That's gonna be your best bet and uh, you know, probably the most effective use of your time if you're looking for your first job. You just need to start writing software. And when you're looking for your first job, you honestly might want to consider taking an internship or part-time job, something that might not pay the best but will help you build that foundation for your resume. This is what I did. I found a job making $12 an hour, about 20 hours a week. But I, I mean, I was 20 at the time and I, my previous jobs paid me like $8 an hour. So $12 an hour, hell yeah, sign me up and I get to code. So I'd say if you're in a position where you can do something like that, definitely look into it. Definitely consider it if you're having trouble finding a full-time job. But obviously, yeah, you, you're not going to want to stay at these companies forever. So I say that I did my internship for about a year and a half. And from that point, I found my first full-time job where I landed at a decent salary. Which leads me into my next point, point two. If you're looking to maximize your income, you really need to switch jobs every one to two years. Let's be real. There's no need to beat around the bush here. Software developers make good money. I mean, that's one of the biggest drawing points for most people, I think, is the money that you make writing code. With that being said, the average dev usually switches jobs every two years. In my experience, I've seen so many of my coworkers just dip and go to a new company, presumably for the money. And the reason for that is because often it is so difficult to get a sizable promotion with the salary you want within the company you're at uh, than it is to go to a different company that will pay you what you're looking for right off the bat. Your value as a dev uh, essentially skyrockets within the first one to five years of experience. And from that point, it kind of baselines off. So let's use me for an example in terms of how my salary 
or my total pay has increased over the last five years. So when I started out uh, as an intern, I was making $12 an hour. After a year and a half at that internship, I had left it to go to my first company where I was making a total comp of about 55K a year, which averages about to uh, $26 an hour. After about another year and a half at that company, I got a promotion making a total of 72K a year, which is about $34 an hour. And after additional year at that company, right, so a total four years of being a dev, I left that company, I moved to Chicago where I make about $50 an hour as a dev. So yeah, eventually there will come a point where you can't essentially double your income <laughs> every time you, you look for a new job. But in that first, I'd say in the first one to five years, you wanna to try to switch jobs every one to two years to really maximize your income. Now with that being said, I really wouldn't recommend hopping around once you find a job that you really like with a company that you really enjoy. And the reason for that, man, is honestly because it, it can be hard to find a company that you actually enjoy, a company that you align with, uh, that, that has people that you really enjoy being around. And when you're working for a company 40 hours a week, you wanna try to enjoy that company as much as possible. So once you're making a comfortable salary, and you really enjoy the company you're working for, in my opinion, unless money is your your only driving point, um, I would recommend just, just staying there and enjoying your life, for real. All right, so number three, and probably the most difficult one for me to adapt to uh, in these last five years of being a developer is that you have to expect a lot of feedback and a lot of criticism. And when I first, got into to coding right and when i got my first big boy job i got a lot of feedback and a lot of criticism i still get it to this day um and at first it, it was really difficult for me and at times it still is to be honest but you really can't take that shit to heart you really can't if you want to grow and become better as a dev you you have to you have to think about your code reviews and your technical reviews as a way for you to grow. And when you write a piece of code and someone comments on your pull request or comments on that piece of code you wrote, telling you how you know you could maybe optimize it or you know you should you know do X Y Z uh, better, so on and so forth. They're coming from a really genuine spot. And you have to realize that no one's out to to hurt your feelings. Everyone in, in your company is there to, to help you grow and to help you get better as you are for them. Don't be that guy who gets a comment on his code and then argues with the other developer that comment with that commented on that piece of code and then go back and forth. You know what I mean? When you get feedback, come from a come from a non kind of detach from your ego a little bit, I guess and come from a really non-judgmental, non-biased position and, and really think about that feedback critically and say, okay, how can I improve myself? And when, you, when you're open to this feedback and this criticism, it's going to help you so much. It's gonna help you tremendously. You're gonna be, you're gonna live up to your full potential as a dev and you're gonna be a very high value to your coworkers and to other companies. So just be open-minded, I guess. That's all I'm trying to say. So number four, and I got two more. I'll try to hit on these pretty quickly here. Um, you never stop learning. I've realized the more that I learn about coding and in tech, the more that I realize like there's so much I don't know. Even after five years, I get so lost sometimes, right? And that's why I said at the beginning of the video, I'm not, where I expected myself to be five years ago, right? If you were to ask me five years ago, like how good I'd be at, at programming, I'd be like, oh, I'd know everything, right? I, I'm gonna be smart and I'm gonna be able to write the best code, but in reality, that is so far from the truth. So yeah, even after five years, I'm occasionally being thrown on projects where I'm completely lost. Whether it's a new tech stack or a new piece of software, I get really lost sometimes. And I know it sounds so cliche, but this is especially true in tech. 
you really have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. No matter who you work for, you're going to be thrown on, on projects and tasks that are so uncomfortable and so unfamiliar to you. You know, and when I first started my career, this gave me a lot of anxiety because I felt like, oh shit, if I don't if I don't figure this out, then I'm I'm fired. I'm gone. And I've gotten to the point where I'm basically numb to that happening in a good way, right? If if I'm asked to, to work on a project with a tech stack that I'm like completely unfamiliar with, I just say, okay, let's do it. I don't think twice about it. And I'd say the best piece of ad advice for situations like that is fake it till you make it, baby. I tell myself, you know what? I have no idea what I'm doing or how I'm gonna do it, but I guarantee you this, I'm gonna figure it out. And to this day, that mindset has not failed me. So last but not least, number five, and before I go on to number five, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and it really helps the channel, it means a lot to me. Um, but anyways, number five, people make work enjoyable. I Man, I always thought that if I could work on a really cool project that I would be happy, right? And after five years, I've worked on some pretty cool projects, but with people that were so difficult to work work with. You know, you, you really do have to have to learn how to work with, with people that you don't necessarily get along with. But working with people that are difficult to work with, even if you're working on the coolest piece of software ever, uh, makes you really not enjoy your job. But I've also been on the flip side of that where I've worked on some pretty honestly boring software but with just super awesome people, right? And in those situations, I end up enjoying my job so much more. I actually enjoy going to work and you know, I would choose the boring software with awesome people over awesome software with people that are really hard to work with every single time, I'm telling you. Um, people really make the job fun and they don't even, and they don't necessarily only make the job fun. Like when you work with a team that you get along with, right, that you really click with, you guys can, you know, bounce ideas off of each other. You have this really awesome team dynamic and because of that, you build really exceptional software. And I'm at a really fortunate spot to uh, say that I currently have that at, at my job. But anyways, that's it. Um, whether you're just starting to look for a job or you've been in, a, in software development 20 years, um, I hope you found something interesting or at least helpful in this video. If you did, if you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate a thumbs up. If you could subscribe to my youtube channel it really helps me out it really gets me motivated and, and amped to make videos i enjoy talking about tech stuff like this it's 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 a lot of fun i i used to do it alone like in the shower i would just you know i'd have an idea and i would just ramble to myself uh about basically like what i'm doing now but you know i decided hey let's flip on the camera and uh you know, do this for for uh youtube anyways uh let me know what you think Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.